Andrew's leading on that. Thank you, um, Sarah. Um, in um, September 2015, the previous Secretary of State for Health committed to getting an extra 5,000 doctors in general practice by April 2020, and Health Education England produced the General Practice Forward View uh, in April 2016, committing to that. Um, not only did you know, have we not advanced towards that, we've actually gone backwards with um, uh, 1,848 fewer um, full-time GPs, um, less the uh, um, uh, retainers and trainers um, between September 2015 and March 2019. So why has it gone so terribly wrong? You know, commitment to plus 5,000, negative 1,848. And why should we have any more confidence in the current plan before us this time, given it's gone so disastrously wrong last time? So I think what we've got is an increase in um, uh, general practitioners in training, coming through in training. We were set a target last year of um, uh, 3,250. We're at about 3,400. Uh, for last year, um, again a target this year for 3,250 coming through and um, we anticipate we'll exceed uh, that number for this year as well in terms of applicants for training going into uh, general practitioner training. So I think we've got two issues going on here. There's a question about why are people leaving and not being retained in the workforce? And then we've got the issue about the commitments to bring uh, more people into the workforce. And I think um, the retention bit has struggled uh, as your figures have pulled out. And I think there's a combination of issues there. Um, pensions will be one of the issues that people will talk about. Um, but in terms of ensuring the future supply, I think we have generated that future supply that will end up converting into the workforce. Do you have any idea how many um, additional migrant GP registrations have been in England and Wales between 2015 and 2017, just looking at the demand side? Uh, I'm sorry, not off the top well, of my head, no. It's, it's one Sounds and a half like million, do. according to the Office of National Statistics. It's, it's one and a half million in England and Wales alone additional migrant GP registrations in England and Wales at a time when the GP workforce in England, I've checked these figures from the ONS, at a time when the workforce has gone down by 1,848. And, you know, I, I, I just, I'm sorry to say, but I don't feel there's quite um, a full understanding of the seriousness of the situation within general practice. Um, it's excellent you're getting more in at the bottom end, but as you say, we are losing them uh, in enormous numbers uh, and at a rate that we, that, that we simply can't afford to. So could, could you tell us more about how you're going to, uh, first of all, have additional overseas recruitment and secondly, help those GPs that we do have stay in the workforce? Just a little bit more detail on those two, two areas, please. Um, so if I can, I'm not looking to absolve myself of any uh, responsibility here, but HEE's role is to I ensure the education and uh, training of the workforce okay. coming I'm through. Happy to come. Yeah. But let, let, to just to stay with it. So, sorry, I didn't know uh, uh, the migrant uh, registrations. I now understand what you mean, and it's a, a, an artifact of increasing demand that there's more of us in England that require access to GPs. Is that At a accepted? time when we've got much fewer GPs. Uh, is I, that I, just, accepted? I want you to understand the seriousness no, no, of the no, no, supply and, and demand. I, yeah, no, I, I, sorry. I, uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's I, I, um, I think I didn't understand the question. I do understand the principle mm. behind the point that you're making. Um, again, this is more for NHS England, but the GP contract which was renewed is seeing uh, an investment of over four and a half billion pounds in general practice over this next uh, period of time. And the issue about uh, general practice and growing general practice uh, is not just about growing the number of general practitioners, it's seeing an increase in things like uh, clinical pharmacists. Um, um, I, I, I absolutely get the importance of the team around the GP and I know that is vital, but just for now please, I want to focus on GP numbers alone because whilst you're getting additional numbers in at the bottom end, you are losing them at a much faster yeah. rate. Okay whilst they're working. Yeah. So the net yeah. situation is very, very serious. Let, let so me I had two up. questions. One, what are you doing on overseas GP recruitment? Two, how are you going to help those really hard-pressed GPs working in, in practices up and down the country now stay and not leave? 
Let, let me pick up the second of those questions. Uh, so, as, as David's just said, the, the recently um, launched new GP contracts sets out significant additional resources um, to wrap around um, GPs. But I agree with you, Andrew, that we also need to face into the fact that we're losing too many GPs um, for whom the current deal isn't working. Uh, I think it, it is good news that the government has heard a lot of that feedback on pensions. I'll come so, on to pensions so, in a second. But I think I it's, but yeah, it's an it important is. element um, yeah. that we hear consistently um, from GPs that that is one of the reasons why um, slightly older GPs are, are retiring early, and we need, to, we need to properly address that through the consultation that the government announced yesterday. But I think we also need to face into the fact that um, a lot of GPs, particularly younger GPs, but not only, want to work in a different way. That they want to work more flexibly, um, that they don't want to um, own their own practice, that they do want to be salaried GPs as part of uh, a network. And we need to redesign in primary care just as much as we need to in secondary and tertiary care to recognise what being a modern employer Can looks like. Can I ask like. when this is going to happen? Because in my view, this is really, really urgent. I agree. Um, that's why um, the setting up of primary care networks has, is fully in train as we speak now, why we uh, announced, and NHS England announced um, before the publication of this, the, the, the new GP contract and the recruitment of, of additional people. So this is real, real and now why the pensions consultation was announced yesterday. Actually, I'd argue that there's a lot of action happening as we speak. And when you talk to GPs working in the primary care networks that are, are beginning to thrive, they describe a very different job to the, the, the old role, and, and they describe something that is much more enjoyable that they want to keep doing. Well, I'm, I'm pleased you've talked about practices which are thriving, because some of them are. The committee went to see Larwood House in Worksop, which was outstanding, and I've recently been told about Thistlemore uh, Road in Peterborough, which is also an outstanding practice. But where you have GP practices that are failing, it seems to me there are very, very few levers that either the CCG or NHS England can use to do anything about it. And the conversations I have, oh, we better not push them too hard or they might hand the contract back. For an absolutely key frontline service that our constituents probably care about more than anything else, I simply don't think that's acceptable when huge amounts of taxpayers' money are involved. So what is happening within NHS centrally to make sure that we can come alongside and support, yes, with a bit of direction occasionally, those GP practices which are seriously failing. Because from my work in this area, I don't think you have the tools in your kit bag to help failing GP practices. Is that of concern to both of you as well? Look, I, I, we have to just be a bit careful that our people plan doesn't overreach into being an entire NHS um, care plan. Um, so you know, at this stage, the work that we've done together over the last three months hasn't got into that level yeah. of detail. So whose responsibility is that? I mean, that's Simon Stevens and NHS England. Yes, though you know, it's a very fair challenge, and we've been working hard over the last three months to make sure that this is a people plan for everyone working in the NHS, that it, is, it really takes into account the issues in primary care. So it's a fair challenge for us to work through in the yeah. final plan. I just don't feel that at this stage David and I have got enough detail to be able no. to answer that question. I mean, I just would comment, in your interim plan, you know, the first mention of GPs, I think, is on page 37. They get about two pages. I'm, I'm um, happy to answer that. You will find that for every um, clinical specialism, you can do roughly the same thing. We've worked really hard not to feel that the way to be inclusive is to list every clinical specialism. It's, it's not actually part of the change, the cultural change that we need to make in the NHS, is to celebrate people working in multidisciplinary teams, rather than and to recognise that we really genuinely are trying to include everyone, and the way we do that is not by listing everyone by name. Okay. We do that by addressing the underlying issues together. I just want to come on to the pensions issue um, now, which we touched on briefly earlier. Has what the Chancellor did uh, yesterday um, been sufficient to deal with these issues because we've had the utterly ridiculous situation where not only the annual allowance but also the lifetime allowance means that you know, we're not going to hit the 18-week target in our hospitals because consultants are doing less work yeah. because it's financially disadvantageous for them to do it and GPs are being asked, advised to do fewer sessions every week 
also not to get an additional tax liability, which is frankly bananas, and we never should have allowed this to happen. So um, is what the Chancellor did yesterday sufficient to deal with that issues with both, both consultants in hospitals and GPs in general practice? I think it's a beginning, and I think it's very important that we listen carefully to all the different um, stakeholders during the consultation to make sure that it is genuinely going to address the issues. So from our perspective, we need to be honest with government that this is a really big problem. Uh, I'm pleased that the government has announced the intention to make changes, but I do want to make sure that it's a proper consultation. And actually, as you were having your pre-briefing, we were having a debate outside with 10 fantastic doctors who are sitting behind me where their concerns about whether or not it will or won't actually deliver what they needed. And we need to have something that, it, that, that prevents the disincentives but is also fair to taxpayers and fair to other professions whose pensions are being capped. Yeah, I know. I, I understand that. I, I just think, along with the line of questioning that, that, that Ben was um, uh, progressing earlier, I, I think there are clear policy recommendations here. Um, I don't think any of us are out to uh, advantage well-paid people, but where um, the public are being su oh, significantly disadvantaged in a key frontline public service that they really care about. It is complete madness, yeah. in, in my view, that the sort of tax pension tail is sort of I, wagging I the you know, public service provision. I completely well. agree with you. And had we not had an announcement yesterday from the government, we would have been very clear that it was an urgent need to address okay. the pensions policy I mean, I, I think it still is serious. And I agree with you. the last point, I would just encourage you to shout quite loudly about this. I mean, some of us have been for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I've raised it twice at Prime Minister's Questions in the last couple of months. But I Agreed. feel I've been a bit of a lone voice on it. And I, I think you know, we all need to shout a bit more loudly. Well, and, and I think the other thing is we also need to recognise that we need to get this done quickly. So you know, we need to, to run a consultation and have real concrete changes going into the next tax year. Otherwise, you know, we'll be sitting here in a year's time still losing fantastic people who have a huge financial disincentive to work for us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Just